I'm not walking funny. I have lordosis. Or a sway back. Oftentimes when we speak about posture correction, we're always talking about our slouchers, all of the people who are here, but we'll, and we're always trying to get their shoulders to roll back and them to lift their chest. But what if your chest is already naturally lifted and you also have a more natural tilt to your pelvis? What if this is you? So the question is, how do we get from this to this? So in many of my videos, I have always spoken about how important that pelvic tilt is, but today we're going to talk about the importance of a pelvic tuck and really learning how to engage the core and isolate the pelvis so that we're not doing all it is, but it's just keeping it in the So hips. we're going to go over our pelvic isolation in a couple of different forms. We're going to start with our hands on our knees. Bring them hands to them knees, please. <laughs> okay, so hands on your knees. Right now, I want the back neutral. I want it just straight. And without moving the back, because we don't want to cat and cow. We're not coming here. We don't want to do this. We just want to move the hips, just the butt. So I want you to tuck the butt in, make it ugly, hide the booty. And then I want you to stick it out, show that thing off, engage the glutes, make it a little bigger while you at it. And then I want you to hide it again. And you got to really engage those lower abdominal muscles and pull the top of your pelvic bone away from your femur. And then whenever you tilt, you wanna press the feet into the floor, engage the glutes, and bring your femur over your, I'm sorry, bring your pelvic bone over your femur. And then you wanna pull the pelvic bone away. And then you wanna push the pelvic bone towards the femur. And then you wanna pull it away. And then you wanna push it towards, boom, this is a tilt. And then when we tuck, we want to really tuck it in, tuck it in. And when you tuck, you got to engage those glutes too. Engaging the glutes and really engaging those pelvic floor muscles, the lower abdominal muscles is very connecting. And sometimes we get disconnected from different parts of our body. But exercises like these where we can really isolate and feel the difference is how we rebuild that connection. Let's bring it down to the floor. And we're going to go over it again on all fours. Remember, we're not cat cowing. This ain't yoga, baby. It's been a step. We're not cat cowing. We are just isolating the pelvis. So I want you to tuck it in. Tuck the butt in. Keep it a secret. It's yours. Then I want you to show it off. Not to the world, but you know, but show it off. And then tuck it in, tuck it in. Keep it a secret. Keep it a secret. And then stick it out. Poke that thing out. Engage the glutes and then suck it in and do you see just the pelvic should be moving the pelvis should be moving only the lower part of your body the shoulders and the back do not move and tuck and tilt and tuck and i want you to tuck and hold and we're going to get to into one of the positions that our tuck is beneficial here in our plank, we're gonna stretch that right leg out, then that left leg out, keeping number one is gonna be the male appreciator, is what I like to call these. <laughs> After you do this exercise, I want y'all to make sure y'all go and thank y'all men for all that work that we're doing. Here we go, we're gonna do some pelvic thrust, dropping the hips for one, and then I want you to tuck, 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 but don't come all the way up here. We're not coming to down dog, we're just coming to a push up position, and I want you to just tuck the butt in and then drop it down. This should be comfortable for you. And then I want you to tuck it in and drop it down and tuck it in and drop it down and tuck it in. Boom. All right, so that one, you wanna do reps of that, keeping that tailbone tucked and really working on dropping the hips and tucking and dropping the hips and tucking. Yes, again, we're not moving the back. We're not doing all of this. It's just in the pelvis, all right here, all in the hips. Keep it right there, right there. Boom. For our second exercise, I want you to meet me here. We have a block underneath our thighs. Our arms are extended out in front. Always making sure that that alignment is on point. You want the arms parallel to each other. You want the feet together. The toes are pointed and the legs are reaching away from you. 
whenever you're in this position, naturally the, the lower back should start to arch. The butt is lifted in the air. But the key of the exercise is to remove and really strengthen the front of the body so that we can learn how to come from this to this. It's all about strengthening. Sorry if my voice gets a little shaky. Okay, hands flat on the floor. We're gonna press those arms into the floor. I want an internal rotation with the shoulders and really pressing the arms and the hands into the floor, keeping the head down. When we're gonna lift up, we're gonna engage the core and pull the belly and the tailbone away from the floor. I want you to look down at your core when you lift and then relax. And then push, engage the glutes. So we're coming from here and we're gonna engage the glutes and tuck and tuck and tuck. And bring it down. And again, we're gonna tuck the butt in, tuck the butt in, press the, uh, don't forget those shoulder rotation. Rotate those shoulders and lift and down. Whew. Now this is gonna be some work. This should feel very challenging for you. You might not get it right the first time, but I want you guys to keep trying. Let's do one more here. Pressing the palms into the floor, tucking the tailbone and lifting up, holding for 10, nine, eight, Seven, six, five, tuck, four, three, two, one, and release. Woo! Lord, we want to also go over deep stretching for the back. Whenever you have lordosis, the muscles along your back are constantly in a contracted position. So when the muscles are contracted, it can be very, they can become very tight. So then whenever you come to round your back, it can be troubling for your spinal fluidity and the range of motion that you have in your spine. You don't just want to be able to arch back. You want to also be able to curl forward. Yes. So let's go over a front curl, but a front curl specifically designed to stretch out that lower back. Because it's that lower and that mid back that's usually very, very stiff. So a good way for you to check your back and if your back is stiff down there whenever you get into this front curl we're going to wrap our arms right underneath the bend of our knees you can start by grabbing wrist to wrist you don't want to pull in tight you want to bring the forehead in and looking down towards your private area <laughs> and you want to start start to create space between your um belly and your thighs so we're not hugging in tight we are creating space and we're using the core to round the back. You want to create a C-shape. But if you have lordosis or if you have a lot of stiffness in your back, then you'll find that it creates more of a hook versus um, a C. So when you come here, you'll be, well, I guess it's kind of hard for me to do it. There we go. Yeah. <laughs> so you, you'll probably be here with the lower back straight and the upper back curled. But we want to really be able to push out and round each section of our spine. But today, the goal is to focus on the lower back, the lower and mid back. So instead of our knees being here and us pushing to our lower back how we usually would for our upper back and shoulder stretch, we're gonna be stretching the, the legs a little bit more out in front, grabbing down lower on the legs and pulling harder, pulling tighter. You wanna pull that forehead into the lap, straighten those legs out. The straighter you get the legs, the more you'll feel it in that lower back. And it's really important that you engage the core here and you're pushing out, sucking that belly in. Not really sucking it in, but pulling the belly in and pushing out through your lower back. The more you engage the core, the more you'll be able to round the spine here. Whew. And I want you to hold that. Hold that and feel it out. And that should be a very, very deep stretch for that lower and mid back. If you put a mirror next to you, if you put a camera next to you, you'll be able to see and make, take those deep, deep breaths and see the space being created in the spine. Yes, thank you. This was my lesson on lordosis. Um, maybe I would give a more detailed class. I know that I do posture classes and I'm usually focusing on unrounding the spine, but I think it's very important that we also focus on rounding the spine so that we're also like just helping with that spinal fluidity. You wanna be able to move in all the ways. Thank you.